welcome to Real World Industry Analysis from Astranti Financial Training. My name is Richard Lewis. I'm a business writer. and I've been a business writer for about 18 years. I started out as a financial journalist and then became an analyst for the consumer goods industry. Uh, and as part of my work, I followed uh, a number of industries very closely. And one of those industries was the personal care industry. And that's the industry that we're looking at in this case study with Sanchez Navarra. Now, uh, as part of my work, I got to know uh, most of the decision makers and I got as a journalist and an analyst to ask them some awkward questions about their strategies and their finances and their funding and their processes and their supply chains and all of that. And now I want to spend an hour or so with you just picking out the key points from that pack to help you pass your exam. OK, let's get into it. Now, I've got the pack open at page one here. Um, and I should say, as I go through, the object of the exercise is not to go through every uh, page. There's about 80, uh, 90 pages in the pack. Uh, the idea really is to pick out some of the key points that I think are going to help you pass your exam uh, and help you by providing some context from the industry. Now, Pete's already gone through the pre-scene uh, in a very detailed way. The point of this exercise really is to give you the industry context. Right then, the modern era, uh, chapter two. Now, the first point I want to make is when we talk about personal care, the personal care market, we are talking about a mature business sector. And a mature business sector is one that's been around for a very long time. It's a stable market full of stable competitors. Sanchez Navarra is one of those stable competitors. It's been in business for about 16 years. Uh, a stable market is not somewhere you're going to find rapid, dynamic growth. It's slow and steady. One to two percentage points each year of growth is considered normal for a stable, mature business sector. The next point I want to make is when we talk about personal care, we're actually talking about every type of product from bathroom essentials or toiletries all the way up to luxury products, uh, fragrances and cosmetics. It's all the same industry. Sometimes it's referred to as beauty, sometimes cosmetics. Uh, we're going to talk about personal care. And the point of telling you this is so you understand that Sanchez Navarra not only competes with bath and body care uh, companies, but also with companies like Estee Lauder, who make uh, makeup, uh, and uh, a company such as Henkel, which makes uh, hair care. It's all part of the same industry. OK, so let's move on. We're going to talk about industry roles now. Traditionally, the personal care industry has pitted uh, brands and manufacturers on one side and retailers as their customers on the other side. The brands are making their products and they're selling them into retailers who are then selling them on to consumers at a markup. And that's pretty much the way it's been worked for a long time. There is, of course, another way of doing it, which is to actually operate a concession inside a retailer. And Sanchez Navarra does this, operating concessions inside department stores. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. For now, let's look at this idea of manufacturers on one side, retailers on another. In recent years, there's been some graying of the distinction between roles and you've got supermarket retailers in particular uh, who have been increasing uh, the importance of their own private label brands. This is their own brands. Not only have they been increasing the penetration of these brands, but also the sophistication. It used to be that own label brands were seen as the poor man's solution to a branded product. Not so much anymore. They're becoming really quite sophisticated products in their own right. And obviously this pits the retailer against its own supplier. Partly in retaliation, we have manufacturers who are actually starting to create their own retail outlets. Uh, it's more and more becoming an industry norm. And this includes, of course, online stores as the Internet has reached critical mass uh, Brands have been finding ways to reach consumers directly by running their own online stores. And then the last bit I want to look at in this section is the concept of the contract manufacturer. A contract manufacturer is someone who's going to uh, produce products without owning a brand. So contract manufacturers will be used to create private label brands. 
but increasingly we're seeing established companies within the personal care industry redefine their roles. Do they want to be a brand? Do they want to be a manufacturer? If they want to be a brand, they don't need a factory. If they want to be a manufacturer, they don't need a brand. So you have a, a, a brand who has their own standalone retail format and you've got retailers who have their own beauty brands. It's worth mentioning because Sanchez Navarra is a company that's highly vertically integrated. It's a brand, but it's also a manufacturer and it's also a retailer. It has 5% of its business going through its own stores. So some things to think about there. Can it change the ratios and redefine the roles that it plays within the industry? And were Sanchez Navarra to do something like that, uh, there's definitely a precedent for that sort of activity, that sort of behaviour from companies within uh, the global personal care industry. Now let's move on uh, and talk about the market. Uh, the global personal care market is a recession-proof market. And when we say that, what we mean is that when there's an economic downturn and consumers are pinched, they've got problems making ends meet at the end of the month, they're still buying their toiletries, they're still buying their beauty products. Personal care is recession proof and it's grown on average about 4.5% these last uh, couple of decades. In the mature markets, we're talking about Western Europe, the US, Japan, the growth is coming in at about 2% on average and then some more dynamic growth coming from Latin America, the Middle East, North Africa. Now let's move on and have a look at the categories of product in the global uh, personal care industry. Toiletries, as you can see, accounts for the vast majority of sales. Next down is skin care, then hair care, and then we've got uh, makeup and fragrance um, coming in uh, around the bottom. Now, why mention this? It's because Sanchez Navarra operates in a couple of these categories already. Uh, it's already operating in the toiletries category with its body wash products. But it also makes uh, body lotion and hand and foot cream, and those would come under skin care. But Sanchez Navarra also makes fragrance, which it puts into its toiletries and to its skin care products. So there's an opportunity for Sanchez Navarra to expand into the fragrance category. It could make a perfume, a bottle of eau de toilette, for example. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I just want to quickly run through with you the next stage about um, the stages of a product's life. The first five stages are where the manufacturer has traditionally been able to exert influence with its trading partners. The concept through to the retail stage is a business to business process. The use and discard phases at the end are consumer controlled. Now, the issue here is that Consumers and other stakeholders like environmental NGOs and governments are increasingly expecting players in the personal care industry to plan for the last two stages at the concept stage. The end of a product's life, what happens to the bottles and, and the micro beads is something that companies must plan for in the early stages of development. Now. Each of these little hexagons represents a different stage where specialist companies are often acting. Now, a you might have in a chain a, a specialist creative agency that comes up with a concept for you. Uh, you definitely have manufacturing specialists, as we've seen. Uh, there are materials, raw material suppliers who are specialists in sourcing and supplying. And of course, there are packaging specialists. Now, I make the point only because anywhere where you have specialist talent in your value chain, there is an opportunity to outsource some touch points, outsource some cost, outsource some complexity. That is an option for Sanchez Navarra, which is highly vertically integrated. So if you're faced with a question in which it becomes necessary to reduce cost, then that's an area that you might want to look at. OK, so outsourcing is a possibility, but of course there are also uh, benefits to being a vertically integrated company. Quality control, of course, is easier if you actually do control it. Um, if you have multiple levels of the supply chain and the value chain under your command, you can actually influence the way things are being done. Uh, you don't have to go and audit all these external companies and get certificates and so forth. And that actually 
does add a lot of cost um, and also when you're dealing with a lot of third parties in your value chain then of course there are markups so there are benefits to outsourcing and there are benefits to vertical integration it's a case of which one is most appropriate all right let's have a look at some product trends within uh, the wider industry now uh, the big trend in the beauty industry the personal care industry is health and wellness and that includes natural and organics. Natural and organics actually fall under a wider interest from consumers about health and wellness. Anything that's deemed to be pure and clean and innocent is really uh, doing well. And this has been going on for really quite a, a long time now. And as you can see, I'm just going to whiz down to the uh, figures here uh, up to about 2009. Uh, you look at the total cosmetics and toiletries market uh, in orange here. Um, pitted against the organics and natural category within that the sales growth has really been coming from that area now Sanchez Navarra is a very strong player in that category uh, that's precisely what they do uh, and L'Oreal um, acquiring the body shop is uh, an example we'll come on to that example a bit later on uh, but it is an example of uh, a leading industry player realizing uh, that it needs a strong play in health and in wellness so this is something uh, that's been uh, going on for a while now in recent times we have seen a little bit of maturing and we said that the personal care industry was recession proof there has been a slight difference in recent times uh, in the way that consumers regard the price points of the natural and organic products they want to buy the higher prices in natural and organics have been something of a barrier consumers are looking for a lower price point there now why do I mention this? Sanchez Navarra is a very high priced uh, natural products uh, manufacturer. So its price point is actually important. Uh, it's something that they might want to look at in terms of the wider industry trends for a lower price. Okay, the next trend that I want to have a look at within personal care is the trend for functional claims. Uh, instead of saying, okay, we're putting out a moisturizer, what they're saying is this is a skincare product with a specific action. This does something. And within that trend, uh, anti-aging is the claim that really is trending at the current time with specific anti-aging claims really rising 45% uh, between uh, 2013 and 2014. So that's something that's really growing. I mention it because Sanchez Navarra doesn't make any specific claims about its products. If you're considering new product development as Sanchez Navarra uh, is, that's something uh, that's happening in the wider industry that they could jump onto. Also trending at present uh, is men's grooming. Uh, men's toiletries are one of the fastest growing categories in the personal care industry, really for the first 10 years or so of the, the 2000s, and this is still growing pretty well. Not only toiletries, but more beauty-based products for men. Let's imagine if you're selling makeup and moisturizers and you're only really targeting women, then uh, if you wanted to expand that market, it's possible that you might consider marketing uh, a product towards men. Evidence shows that men are accepting a wider range of body care products.